Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Woki and I'm here with Zenra. Hello. And we're here for Shonen Archive, the series in which me and Zen have dedicated ourselves to watching all Shonen Jump anime and also eventually live action. I'm threatening that every episode now until we finally do it. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> I really want to see that City Hunter movie, damn it. And anyway... <laughs> And we plan to do this until the eventual heat death of the entire universe, or whenever One Piece comes out, which will happen in 50 years from now. Just kidding, I know that it ends in five years. It's modern today, but when people look back at this, they're like, damn, they were right, or damn, they were wrong the entire time. Uh, or one of us kicks the bucket, in which case we are freed from this. Let's get into it. We are starting with uh, Gintama and Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, and we're here to talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Because believe it or not, it's episodes 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. These are the good episodes I was promised the last episode. Yes, I told you that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Yes, and these were some fucking fantastic episodes compared to what we've been getting. This is like drowning, not drowning. That's a, It's like being in the desert, and this is finally the cool sip of water. <laughs> That's yeah, you right found there. the oasis. Yes. Oh my god. Thank god. Thank god. <laughs> you have no idea how bad last week was. <laughs> I can see a lot of bad stuff. Don't get it twisted. I love watching bad things, but something about those episodes are just not enough. It doesn't matter because we're here for some good stuff. Finally, the GX stocks. We can do a legit stock report where hopefully there's actually good income for, <laughs> for a change. But let's start here. Let's start with episode 21, Zen, which is called The Duel Off, Part 1 in English, and The Fusion Seal, Judai versus Misawa, First Part. And then I guess so, we can also transition into The Duel Off, Part 2, and uh, yeah, Summon Wild Man. Yeah. Summon Wild Man, Judai versus Misawa. They really like to just spoil what happens in the episode in Japanese. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's like the old anime thing where they're just like. Like the one yeah. where. Um, Goku the dies. Ball one where it's like, yeah, Cell is defeated, and you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah, actually, those are actually really good episode titles. Those are some of my favorite. Where it's like, oh, no, uh, what's going to happen next? And it's like, Heroic Sacrifice is the name of the next episode. Yeah. And it's like, oh. <laughs> oh <laughs> All right. No. Please. All right, go ahead, Zen. Tell us about part one and part two. So part one, uh, they are choosing like who's going to represent Duel Academy against North Academy. I wonder where Duel Academy is located, where it gets to just be called Duel Academy, but the other ones have to have like a regional name. But to be fair, anyway, uh, the, the one in the north is really the hell up there. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 real north. Uh, <laughs> and they're arguing that it should just be Kaiser because he's obviously the best one. But the uh, North Academy is going to use a first-year student, so Dual Academy wants to do so as well. And they're trying to choose who. Uh, and so they try to choose between um, Misawa and Judai. Well, the, in the beginning, uh, they're, they're they say the just two. Judai. But then Crowler says, oh, no, Montebin! Well, I think it's, I think it's uh, Kaiser that, that nominates Judai, right? He says yeah. that you should use him. And everyone's yeah, like, oh, and okay. then, yeah, and Kronos is like, no, I'm a, I'm the, the villain of this season technically, <laughs> um, so we can't have that. No, and so he says they boy. should use, uh, Misawa instead. Yeah. And so they decide that they should duel for it, uh, to win the the right to be the representative. Um. I think that they don't know that right away because this was done in like a meeting. In like a boardroom meeting, yeah, uh, and so they they tell them later on. I think the the Slifer professor tells them that they're going to duel for the title, and so uh, Misao was like, "Aha!" But I counter decked you like an asshole. I built a deck <laughs> really purely to beat yours, um, and so this has maybe one of my favorite scenes when he's doing the counter picking because I think Jade uh, Judai is just like. Oh yeah, I'll do a Masawa, no wetter. And then they cut to Masawa, and he's like in a computer going, "Elemental hero, 
lame wingman, known properties being formed together with Percentatrix and Avion. <laughs> if I can just stop Avion and Percentatrix, I can stop them. Oh, no. But what about Thunder Giant? And he's like looking up Thunder Giant. He's like yeah, doing a He's full, like, like crazed on a computer, like in the middle, of, like just looking insane. Yeah. Meanwhile, Judah's like, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, cool. Let's do it. And so I think it's a pretty... Again, I really do like the contrast between the dual styles of Masawa and Judai, where Judai is just so laid back, and Masawa is just that dude who's like, I need to look up... I'm adding this specifically to my deck because I know that this is very top in the meta right now, and I need to stop it in case I ever run into it, where <laughs> Judai's answer to <laughs> if he ever ran into that card of the meta, he'd be like, I'll just win. <laughs> That's my yeah, response. Yeah, perhaps I'll just do better. Yeah. <laughs> Um, they run into, like, a reporter, but I don't think you know it's a reporter right away. I think it kind of comes up later. Um, yeah, a little bit. He does sneak he, in, but it's, like, not sure why. He could be a, a, a spy, for all we know. Yeah, he, he snuck into the school. Um, and we get a flashback that shows that he was, at one point, a duelist who quit because he got his shit wrecked by Kaiva so hard <laughs> that he could never duel again. This is another um, fantastic part because he has like a war flashback when he sees the skyscraper card. Yeah, he sees Judai's card, and he he apparently was an elemental hero player, and oh. Kaiba fucking obliterated him. Destroyed him. him. I want to see that duel. I want to see Kaiba fight elemental heroes so badly. You have no. Uh, are idea. you ready for a major spoiler? You totally what? will later on. Oh, okay, sweet. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> continue on for you um yeah so then uh the guy's like sno snooping around about the uh disappearing students and judai is an idiot and he's like oh you mean the terrifying haunted abandoned dorm where all the students go missing and the guy was like oh bet um <laughs> yeah basically yeah that's almost exactly what happens and so then he goes to uh like investigate it um and then we cut to the duel as uh, Misawa is looking like a fucking lunatic still at his computer, like Googling counterplay for the shittiest archetype in the world. <laughs> um, and they decide to go in and the duel starts as the reporter is like doing this weird. I don't really know why the reporter's here in this episode, these episodes, because I'm pretty sure in the end his he like gets inspired by watching the duel and he's like, can't risk this school. I have it here. Because then my these notes, kids left uh, nowhere to duel. Yeah, but his 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 reasoning is a tough luck, kids. And then at the end, he's uh, the funny thing is that he's like kind of like uh, it's similar to the Manjome arc where he's trying to understand to learn to love dueling because it's a it's it's really funny because I think at the beginning here, Judai is really teaching people to love the game and not worry about wins or losing when wins or losses. That doesn't really matter. What matters is that. Yu-Gi-Oh is fun and you should just play it um which is a very funny lesson to kind of teach would eventually would be taught again in the uh arc 5 arc V where it's that but with a war which we'll have to get to eventually <laughs> <when> we, <laughs> somewhere down the years down <laughs> we'll have to go through that giant thing but it is kind of nice where it's kind of like I guess this contrast of someone who's kind of lost love in the game He's someone who uh, played off meta and got destroyed by the meta, which the meta is obviously Seto Kaiba. The man is the meta, <laughs> if you were to ask uh, him. Yeah, Kaiba is the meta. I am the meta. <laughs> I summon blue eyes in attack mode. Um, so he's kind of lost love of the game, and then he's kind of basically learning to love it again by watching uh, Judai Duel. I think that's kind of why yeah. he's here. But in the overarching thing, he does nothing. <laughs> And it's funny because that is ultimately a lesson that uh, gets revisited later on in, in GX. Hmm, interesting. Uh, yeah. But, uh, so they're, they're dueling, and the big turning point of the duel here is that uh, Misawa uses Cursed Seal of the Forbidden Spell and uses it on polymerization. So Judai can't use polymerization anymore, um, which is, like, the big thing, because he basically, like, sealed off Judai's ability to fuse. Um, so he kind of gets the advantage for a while. He summons fucking... Uh, I remember finding this really funny. He summons um, Kyo Zanryu, which was like never yes. a good card. 
Never. <laughs> Never. Never. In his whole existence has that been a good card. Uh, Never. But Misawa uses it here for reasons I can't explain. Uh, he... It was really fun. I, that really felt like they're like, fuck, what card does he fucking play? I don't know, man. No, uh, what's a diamond card? And the funny thing yeah, is, what's, they a, had, what's it, a card with like rocks? I, they did eventually make this a card, but this was not originally a card in. Um, <laughs> this was not originally a card when it was first released. There was no card that could easily summon uh, this fucking card. Um, eventually, they did make it into a card. Its effect is not literally summon this specific. It's it's summon he was on you. Yeah, no, that would be hilarious. It's special summon from your hand or deck one level seven or lower dragon type normal monster in face up defense position. So still bad, <laughs> but not as bad. Yeah, as... it's not good, but it's not as bad no. as you can only play Hills on Ryu. And it's crazy because um, he also mentions that the only reason he's able to do that, he has to be like, they need 10 cards on top of it. Which I was like, what fucking game are you playing <laughs> where Carboneton gets on the field and you use 10 cards to summon one here he's on you? A 2100 attack beat stick. It's crazy. But I yeah, like that actually. Uh, yeah. Fucking uh, weird stuff. Bastion's deck is weird to me. Uh, yes. It's a counter deck uh, that also plays weird. Yeah. So Judai tries to get around not being able to summon by using uh, Blade Edge. Mm -hmm. Because he is the, the fattest elemental hero that doesn't require fusion to use. Yep. Even with um, eventually, they, they get around him. And then they're going to... Uh, oh, that's right. That's when he uses uh, Wild Heart. And then he fucking top decks Cyclone Boomerang. Which, Judai does this shit all the time. Yeah. Where he top decks the exact specific equip card that he needs to uh, win the day on the exact elemental hero that he has on the field. Because, so, like, Cyclone Boomerang, any other time you drew that card, it's fucking useless. Yes. But he gets it right here. Here's the crazier thing about this. Not only does he draw this, he had no way of knowing this, but basically um, Masawa only has 500 life points left, and his combo is basically he has a monster, the Litmus uh, Doom Ritual, the Litmus, Litmus card, where Litmus Doom Swordsman, he gains 3,000 attack if there's a face-up trap on the field, and then he uses Spirit Barrier, which means he takes no damage from... Um, from attacks anymore if they attack him and also his monster gets 3,000 attack also his monster is unaffected by traps and it's un it can't be destroyed by battle so the only way for him to win this turn is to have the world's craziest top deck to have to draw elemental hero wild heart and cyclone boomerang which will win him the game because when he uses spirit yeah, because barrier, cyclone boomerang destroys the spirit barrier which gets rid of the last of bastion's life points yes and the crazy thing is that when the spirit barrier is destroyed when he activates it he goes i know i play cyclone boomerang it's like how did you know <laughs> It's like, damn, I, if I was Bastion, I would have been mauling hard. There's no yeah. top deck. Yeah, I would have been too. How the fuck do you top deck Cyclo Boomerang? That's so, yeah, it's so crazy. But yeah, the the game ends and he is now officially the, um, the, 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 the rep for the duel against North Academy. Yeah, and then the, 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 the reporter, the journalist goes up to um, Asuka and says, I'm not going to look into it further. Don't worry about it. Well, he says he says he's not going to break it. He's not going to break the story because originally he was going to break the story and ruin the school's reputation to get rich, and then he decides he's not going to do that anymore, and he's just going to try to find the kids out of the like the good of his heart, basically. Yes, he he turns from an evil press sneak fuck into a honest journalist by the end. Yeah, yeah, he's like a, a, a fuck shithead evil journalist in it for the cash. Yeah, uh, the and then he becomes like a good guy. He's the kind of journalist Nappa hates. And then by the end yes. of it, he might be one that Nappa could begrudgingly respect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was these this two duels here. Um, here's the notes I have here. Of course, as obvious, Misawa doing computer, doing deep research on how to beat Elemental Heroes is fucking amazing. There's nothing funnier to the, than that. Again, I really do like that. It's not the fact that I, I, maybe it's a little bit it's a respect towards judai the player 
that he's actually looking up how to beat elemental heroes because they should be the easiest thing in the world to beat. There's no way that in any world other than the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX world are the elemental heroes. And very briefly, when Stratos was released, let me reframe that because when Stratos released, e-heroes were a fucking threat (laughs) that were a problem (laughs) because Stratos made them way too good. Or at least Stratos, Stratos was, was he, he was it was heroes in general, mm-hmm. not just elemental. Because like the big one was um, malicious, where you would pull him and then get him in the grave and then pull the others. Yes, and back in the old days, the Destiny heroes were actually used because you know um, they actually had good effects for the time. Diamond Dude Turbo was a thing, stuff like that. But the elemental heroes never really. Their biggest one has always been Stratos, and I think it still is to this day, isn't it? Is he still technically, unless you count Neos, I guess. I guess some certain Neos cards might be just as good, but in terms of level four summon, Stratos is still one of the best out there. And, oh yeah, easily. Yeah. Stratos fucking slams. Yeah. But he doesn't have any of those here. At best, we, he actually summons the best elemental hero at the time, which is Wildheart. And it's crazy that he summons Wildheart and he doesn't actually use his effects, except for the fact that... Yeah, he doesn't use the trap immunity. No, he uses it to fucking get destroyed, which is insane. <laughs> I, It's funny, because imagine if, if this was the old Yu-Gi-Oh! Because usually in the old Yu-Gi-Oh!, Yu-Gi would p- pull out a brand new card, and then it would be the exact card he needed for that exact reason. This is like an exact an exaggeration of this, where it's technically not Wild Heart that saves the day, it's his equip card. It's the fucking Cyclone Boomerang, yeah. yep. I also have it here, the craziest top deck in the fucking world happened. It is, it's pretty insane. The duel itself was actually pretty enjoyable through it out. There was some twists, there was some good things here. Them using that old trap card that is like that removes all co- and that make that forbids it from that spell from being played. I actually kind of liked because I was like, oh man, I haven't seen this shit played in forever. This is actually something where it's like, oh yeah, if there was a side deck that, that existed, a best two out of three, this would be the perfect thing to just stop <laughs> this specific deck in its tracks. Um, I like that very brief um, look at Kaiba. As he stands triumphantly as a shadow over the defeated elemental hero player. <laughs> that was great. Um, in general, it was very just fun to watch. And it was also kind of nice to see more about the missing students as well. Because when... Uh, it's 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 a similar build up to the stuff with uh, Masawa. Where it's kind of being built up very slowly for an eventual payoff. And I'll say the stuff with uh, Manjome makes me feel like... Um, they're able to kind of pay that off, even though it's a very long wait. So I'm kind of looking forward to seeing more of that stuff when it happens. So, yeah, good two episodes, a good two parter. I've been waiting for this duel for a while and it did not disappoint me, really. How you feel? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it's a good duel. It's one of the better duels at this point in the series. Um, GX generally tends to do its best early on when they build up a duelist and then kind of make you stew on waiting for the game. Um, this is a good one. Misawa's a little weird. He's not my favorite. I don't know if he's anyone's favorite, which is why he stops existing basically later on. This early um, bit of him is good, though. Yes, but it is good. Uh, and then I also like wrapping up the ep- the episode like recaps with the adaptation differences from the wiki because they're always very interesting. So in the Japanese version, Misawa says that he may have actually miscalculated and made the wrong choice by only focusing on removing fusion. He still thinks it's enough to let him win, but he thinks that he underestimated Judai's deck because he thought that would be enough, and it, it clearly there's more to it than that. Uh, in the English version, he basically is a giant douche the whole time, and he's like, haha, you can't fuse, I'm unbeatable. And then also, in the Japanese version, when Judai explains what Wild Heart does, uh, Misawa says, I already know. But in the dub, they gave him the anime, what? <laughs> like, reaction shot where he had no idea. Oh, yeah, you're right. That's Another actually... fun fact. Yeah, in the in the dub version, they make it like, uh, like you know, the, the typical Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, it does what? <laughs> like, kind of moment <laughs> where um, in, in the original version, uh, Misawa's just like, yes, correct. I know. I knew 
Yeah, that's actually a good bit there because he's done so much research into the elemental heroes. He knows about Wildheart. That he knows. Yeah, he knows what every card Judai has does. Oh shit, um, that's a good. Which is a good little detail. bit of, yeah, good little bit of character stuff there. Yeah. But fun fact, both of them are wrong because Judai attempts to use Wildheart incorrectly. Judai claims that Spirit Barrier won't stop Wildheart because Wildheart is unaffected by traps, but that's not how it works. <laughs> uh, Spirit Barrier affects the player, not Wildheart. So it, Wildheart isn't immune to its effect. Even though both of them go, yeah, I know that it would work. It totally would not work. <laughs> That's a funny <laughs> You're right on that one. Uh-huh. Wildheart is not immune to cards that don't target him. Or to cards that don't affect him, I'll say. Yeah. He can't cut through trap effects on other cards. He would be broken if he did. Imagine that. Imperial Order. Actually, my wild heart says, fuck that card. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then if, according to this, he also draws five cards from Mirage of Nightmare when it should have been four. Yes, that was more of a probably just an animation thing, so I left it out. But uh, that's fair. yeah, he does draw too many cards when he uses Mirage of Nightmare. Mm hmm. Also, to do the update on Avion getting rocked report, uh, he does get destroyed by the awesome power of math in episode 22. Yeah, Avion still the uh, punching bag. I'm yes. curious to see where uh, we go from there. Like, because eventually Avion stops being like the every duel staple. Mm -hmm. I really want to see which of the Neo Spatians starts being the one that gets absolutely shit rocked. I feel like it's Air Hummingbird. I'm going to say right now, they, can we do a quick guess? Actually, everyone stop what you're doing. Feel free to leave a comment if you so wish. Which of the Neo Spatians do you think is going to take the most damage and the most L's? The most game? beatdowns? Um, it, it's got to be between Air Hummingbird and Aqua Dolphin because those are the ones that have both one effects that he uses while they're on the field and two, uh, they're not basically immune to battle like grand mole is hmm. mm, you're right i think grand mole is the one that's probably going to be died the least because it's impossible to kill grand mole because you, you can't to... kill it by battle yeah no you have to have like some kind of amazing trap or spell card to take down grand mole he's that broken i love grand mole so much by the way if you can't tell yes uh, i love using that card i feel like it might be space panther because space panther has an attack directly one right or what is yes, but he really never uses Dark Panther, I don't think. It, like, mm -hmm. It's very rare that he plays Dark Panther. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna the go only other one I can think of, here. it might be Flare Scarab, because Flare Scarab sucks, and suck. I feel like he plays him a lot. Uh, yeah, I know he, he plays Flare Neos a good bit. Hmm. I'm going go, I'm go with Panther, but I think you're also right on the track that I think it would either be a Hummingbird or Aqua Dolphin. So I'll make sure to keep track of that. Don't worry. When it comes to the Neospace time in Season 2, I will keep track of which Neospatian we think is going to get rocked the most. But for right now, I think our money's on Avion. Actually, if I, if, I, I was, if I was a crazy man, I would actually go back and do a statistic. Actually, you know what? I am going to do that. By the end of the Season 1, I will, we will, I will tell you which Elemental Hero took the most, <laughs> taking actual damage. Oh my god. I'm going to say right now it has to be Avion. I don't see it being any other monster. I think that's going to be a pretty obvious on that one. Yeah, it, it's easily. And, and the thing with Avion, even if it doesn't get destroyed the most often, even though I'm pretty sure it is Avion, um, it gets destroyed with like the most detail. Yes, it does. It always gets like the very specific death shots. Yeah, and then he always brings it back. The strongest soldier in his deck is Elemental Hero Avion because he just keeps coming back. <laughs> Uh, pretty good alright let's go on to the next episode which the next episode is uh, episode 23 the little Balowski or it's as it's yes. called in Japanese exhaustion Moki Moki duel yes yeah, so this is the good meme episode oh, this, yeah this is, uh, this is the episode where it's revealed that they have a student like sealed away in some sort of vault <laughs> Um, some sort of weird sphere vault kind of thing. They keep, they keep him um, in, like, the, the spear from Akira. <laughs> they keep him, they, he's, yeah. like, in permanent life. And I'm pretty sure that, like, because Kronos puts on, like, a hazmat suit yeah. when he goes to talk to him. 
because uh, he wants him to duel and beat um, Judai. There's also a really good scene of Judai trying to make edits to his deck about like, ah, oh, what what should I put in? And they're all like, oh, you should put like my favorite cards in your fucking elemental hero deck. And it's so funny watching someone like Misawa be like, oh, wouldn't you like to put fucking water, water dragon, dragon? <laughs> in your in your elemental hero deck for this tournament? And it's like, what the fuck? My, my favorite uh, bit is he's like, oh, you need the awesome power of Water Dragon. Then uh, Alexis is, uh, Alaska is like, if you ever need to attack directly, let me tell you, Etowal Cyber is your thing. And then you have Show Show, and he's like, how about Power Bond? And then you have, <laughs> which is maybe I think my favorite bit out of all of them is when Chumley comes in and all he says twice is, Desk Koala would be good as well. <laughs> he just, he's not really. <laughs> He's right, by the way. <laughs> Death Koala would be fucking... Dest- he, it's destructive. That card is just crazy powerful. So the fact that he keeps repeating himself, Hayato keeps just going like, oh, Death Koala would be good as well. After everyone else, everyone else is like building up their card, is really funny. It's also really funny how quickly Sho is willing to get rid of Power Bond. Yeah, he was like, you want this? <laughs> yeah. You want this fucking thing? This My whole arc is- earlier was about yeah. this? My this card, my brother said that I have to be a good enough duelist to know when to use it correctly. I think you'll know when to use it. You don't have to run any machines, right? <laughs> you want to run UFO yeah. fighter? You run a pure warrior deck. Do you want power bond? <laughs> Though funny enough, I think no, because UFO roid fighter requires UFO roid, so he also needs UFO roid. Yes, he would need um, to have UFO roid to do that. But yeah, this scene was fucking great. It's actually really funny. These people pushing their cards to put into any elemental hero deck. Uh, so Good eventually man. Judai runs away because he can't get away. They won't leave him alone when he's trying not to have to deal with that shit. Um, he's just trying to make his deck for the match against North Academy. Uh, and he bumps into this person that Kronos released from the vault. Uh, and it's revealed that he can also see dual spirits, just like Judai can with Wing Karibo. Mm-hmm. Um... And they decide that they want to duel, and Judai gets excited about it, because he's like, oh, someone else that can see spirits, that's crazy. And they start dueling, uh, and the the man's spirit is Moki Moki, which slams. It's so good. Um, so good. The vibes this Moki Moki puts out, I wish to one yes, day achieve. Yes, the Moki Moki vibes are crazy. Um, and then it's revealed that this guy used to be the best student at Duel Academy, um, the but everyone who dueled them ended up dropping out, and it's because um, they think he has some kind of like crazy vibe power that just like makes you so chill that you don't want to duel anymore. Yeah, it's apparently some point um, he didn't have Moki Moki, but once he added Moki Moki to his deck, he basically caused nonstop dropouts. Yeah, he was like destroying the school. Um. But he's unable to overcome Judai's passion for dueling uh, with his chill-out vibes <laughs> uh, power with Moki Moki. Mm-hmm. And Judai ends up winning. Uh, and he assumes that his special effect with Moki Moki didn't work because of how much Judai likes to duel. Couldn't overcome it. Too powerful. It's pretty, Which is a pretty good message here. And then I forget, does it end with just everyone asleep? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, yes, it's, it's, it ends with like um, everyone except for Judai is asleep, and then I think Judai's like, if you wake up, I'll um, I'll use your cards that you keep trying to give me if you'll just get <laughs> up, and then it ends. Yeah. That at some point, also Kronos also fell asleep. I think it was when the King Moki Moki came he, in because he jumps down and he um like explains himself and he takes off his hazmat suit yes which is dumb <laughs> and he falls by the <laughs> vibes. So dumb. I, I you know i'm gonna be honest when he jumped down there with his jet jet powers it hit me all at once how stupid this premise for how good this episode is is the not only like i imagine like because obviously this dual academy is owned by kaiba and the kaiba corp he had to have gotten like some kind of invoice saying so we're gonna need a suit 
because we're going to put one of our students in an isolation spear because he keeps making people drop out. And Kaiba's looking at that going, well, all right then. <laughs> Give them the money. If that's, yeah, if that's what they need. And then he has an internal monologue. Moki Moki, huh? Is this what I can use to take down the pharaoh? He starts looking up Moki Moki plays. That's actually what I think the Duel Academy is, is that it's actually a long-term con for him to eventually find the strategy that could take down Yugi so he could go visit him in the afterlife and take him down. <laughs> but yeah, this is one of the best meme episodes in the series, yeah. uh, easily. Hands down, this episode was so fucking funny. Both, I think, intentionally and unintentionally, I think it can be enjoyed in both ways. It was just a whole lot of fun. They actually, I think here's the thing that was the difference between this episode and the previous ones, is that Moki Moki as a card is inherently funny. And it's inherently yes. funny to fight a the Moki Moki The concept of Moki Moki is funny. Yes, and a Moki Moki deck, because this actually was a deck back in the day, which was the Moki Moki beatdown, where you had to use a bunch of like like tiny monsters and you tried to overwhelm your opponent with the power of basically shit monsters. <laughs> and it's uh, real fun. That's, I think, the big difference between this meme episode and the other ones that the other meme episodes were just, like, not... They were, like, cards, but they weren't, like, good meme cards. There wasn't a real meme deck, you know what I mean? Like, Giant Orc, not really a big meme deck you can build around that with Goblin King. The Maiden in Love's not a real card. The Tarzan card wasn't a real card. The monkey had, like, fucking two monkey cards. <laughs> yeah. The poor monkey got screwed yeah. over. But in here, it has... There's such a good joke here about when he summons Hanawa and he goes, I summon Hanawa! And he goes, Hanawa? Yeah, it's Hanawa. Oh, it is Hanawa. <laughs> There's like a moment. Uh -huh. and, then yeah. when, and it's just like the shittiest monster. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then when he says, yeah, it's Hanawa, the Hanawa goes, Hanawa. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, oh, it, it, it is Hanawa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's fucking good. And then also when he destroys the monsters, the Moki Moki freak out, like the fucking face of Moki Yes, Moki. when the Moki Moki gets angry. Yes. Uh, there's also the voice of Moki Moki, which goes, Moki Moki! Moki Moki! And then when they summon King Moki Moki, he goes, King Moki Moki! King Moki Moki! Fun fact, they changed the Moki Moki voice in the dub version. They actually redubbed Moki Moki. What does he sound like in the dub? He, he sounds like a, he's like, Moki Moki. <laughs> <laughs> it's super fucking weird. Okay, okay. I think that probably goes okay, with the, okay. based off of this being a reference to the big Lebowski I assume there's a lot more stoner humor in the <laughs> in the English dub version there is yeah oh, that's pretty good um, some actual specific notes I actually did put down specifically for the duel um, uh, hero barrier which is a card that Judai still use I put down here hero barrier is like a worse version of negate attack I don't know why he plays it this is. card and eventually it's revealed that he also has negate attack so he just uses both that's crazy and I don't know why he wouldn't just use another copy of negate attack but uh, anyway also in a side note here um, I saw in the comments for the crunchy roll you can look down here there were people arguing about um, what cards is Judai actually keeping in his deck I think someone was saying he removes Fusion Gate at one point. Because I was like, I'm pretty sure this is the point where he removes Fusion Gate from his deck because he never uses it again. So I thought that was just very interesting, the idea of people trying to keep track of what an anime deck is actually using at this given point in time. Because <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, I guess some of these... In theory, he would be removing and adding cards over time. You just don't know which ones. Yeah, it's kind of like the thing with... I, I've never bothered trying to do that when it comes to the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime. Because I'm just like, oh, he has this card now. <laughs> and, yeah. like, I don't... Because, like, like when Yu-Gi in the original series, you know, eventually he stops using the Beaver Warrior. And we're like, all right, well, I'm not going to look into when... When he edited out Beaver Warrior. It's right when he added Dark Magician Girl. That's what that's what I'm saying. He dropped the, <laughs> he dropped the Beaver Warrior for the, for the Dark Magician He dropped Louise girl. for the Dark Magician Girl. So sad. Louise is waiting for his phone call back. He's just so badly. He was in the group shot. Give Louise justice. Give Beaver Warrior justice. That's all I ask. Uh, 
so yeah, I think it was a very enjoyable episode. I think it can be enjoyed in both kind of different ways of seeing it. Um, how do you feel about it? It's great. Phenomenal episode. This is like, early GX is rough, and everyone who says that is correct, but this is when it's like peak. This is like quality <laughs> early GX. So we're going to add it to the peak list right next to mm-hmm. episode 60 <laughs> in terms of 61? Yep. In terms of peak moments of the franchise, is going to be this one in the episode called The Big Bolowski or Exhaustion Mokey Mokey Duel. That would be great to do out of context, being like the peak list, and then on the top is like episode 61, and then it's episode 23 Yu Gi Oh! GX Exhaustion Mokey Mokey Duel. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, I'll keep a track on that for later. For funny, fun times, so people can yell at me later when someone who doesn't know the when it leaves my general area of people who understand the joke and they start getting mad <laughs> over the fact that they're only two yeah. When it leaves your target audience, then it's just angry people. Yeah, when it's people going like, "What the fuck?" The, the episode sixty one and Kintama, but not any of the good ones later on. What the fuck are you doing, Moki Moki Duel? And then my response is like, "Hey man, Moki Moki, that's all I care about." <laughs> I'm just here for the Moki Moki. I'm just here for the vibes, for the good vibes, bro. So what are the differences in adaptations, then? So the adaptation differences in the the Moki Moki dual episode. Uh, in the Japanese version, they make a, like a Pandora's box reference, which is actually, like, topical. Uh, because they say, like... Uh, He's opening Pandora's box, but he hope that you know he hopes that it will give him hope or something. And Pandora's box always has hope at the end of it. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay. Um, the English version leans more heavily into the Big Lebowski because the character's name is Belowski, which is obviously just yep. Lebowski with the B and the L switched. Of course. Um, and then the English version cuts out a shitload of his backstory. That's a shame because his backstory is super interesting, actually. Yeah, the they cut out that... every single flashback except for the very last one. I kind of like this idea of someone who was number one, who was obviously, you know, top of the game, top meta, and then one day he met Moki Moki and his life was forever changed, where he doesn't follow any of the strategies or anything. He's just like, I just want to win with Moki Moki, man. And he does. My bro. Exactly. And My homie, when... Moki Moki. What I need now is I need Kaiser's reaction about hearing, like, what... Basically, I want the prequel series where it's this guy and Kaiser <laughs> when Kaiser first joins the school. Yeah, before Kaiser's number one. Yeah, before <laughs> Kaiser's number one and he's number one and he's kind of, like, trying to come up come up top. He's starting down at Slifer Red trying to make his way to Obelisk Blue. And right before he can achieve beating the number one duelist he fucking has a mental breakdown and starts playing Moki Moki and causing people to quit the game (laughs) (laughs) Yu-Gi-Oh! GXX (laughs) the before times that's what I want (laughs) alright next episode episode 24 in the English version it's called The New Chaz or as it's called in Japanese, Revival Manjome Thunder, which is a better title. Yes. Yes. So we'll explain the Manjome Thunder thing when we get to the version mm-hmm. differences because it's impossible to yes. not talk about it because it's a huge part of uh, Manjome's gimmick going yeah. forward. And it does not translate at all into English. So it's no. completely different in the dub. <laughs> it's so hard. Um, it's impossible to do it in English. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is a Manjome episode. Uh, and we learned that it, the boat that he left Duel Academy on is, like, sinking. Yeah. And he's, like, gonna die. He's having uh, crazy flashbacks to Judai going, like, hey, let's duel, brother. And he's, like, going, shut up, this is all your fault. Yeah, he's, like, dying of, of exposure on a boat and hallucinating and shit. Um, and he falls overboard and gets washed away and gets rescued by a submarine. Um, and the guy's like, "Oh, your your cards are useless now. You have to build a whole new deck." And he throws him Ojama Yellow, um, and Chaz almost destroys it. And the guy's like, "Don't. You're gonna regret it if you do." And then uh, Ojama Yellow is a dual spirit, 
And so they they shoot Chaz out onto this like frozen island, mm-hmm. and he makes his way to this big building in the distance, which turns out to be the North Academy. Um, and the only way you can get in is if you have a deck. And obviously, Manjomi does not. And they say, okay, but around the Academy, there's cards hidden everywhere. So you can find the cards and build a deck. But the guy who tells him this is that he says he only has 39 cards. He couldn't find a 40th, and he's too weak. So he's just going to die <laughs> of exposure in the tundra <laughs> um, because he's, he couldn't find the last card. He also says, I basically wasted my life. Don't be like me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Manjome says, like, I'll just buy them from you then. And the guy's like, no, I wasted my whole life getting these. Um, so Manjome walks off, uh, finding the cards eventually. Yeah, a great montage of him getting some cards, which are like, he's risking his life for a giant rat that's up above, like, a <laughs> an icy structure. Yeah, yeah, he's, like, fighting for his life out there to get, like, any card he can find. To get, like, Yaru um, Panda and <laughs> Ring of Destruction, which are encased in ice. <laughs> Some great stuff. Uh, this- and then he comes back when he, uh, and he says to the old man that he found 41 cards, so you can have one so that you can get in. And he gives him a card and reveals that, in fact, he did not. He lied, and he decided to just be a good guy and give the old man a card so that he didn't perish in the wilderness. Mm-hmm. Um, but then he found another card right where the old man was sitting, and he picks it up to give him his 40th card, and he also goes in. Um, he tries to give him a Jama Yellow because he thinks it's useless, but the spirit convinces him not to. Convinces um, him not to. <laughs> yeah. So the they do let him in, and it's like North Academy is some sort of like cowboy town. Yeah, it's really funny uh, how different how North Academy is inside versus North Academy outside. Yeah, it's like a frigid tundra outside, and then you go inside, and it's like an old western saloon. Yeah, um, at some point, Ar- the Arthur Morgan's gonna pop out, <laughs> ready to fucking yeah. fight someone. Um, and then the old man gets beaten in a duel. And this guy comes out calling himself the king. And he says that uh, in order to get in, you have to duel against every student. Um, and then whenever you eventually lose to whoever, you you like get in at that rank. So like if you beat 20 people and then you lose, like you're ranked at wherever you the last win you got was. Um, Manjome is beating the shit out of everybody because he's just that good. And then there's four more left, who are the four emperors. Uh, and Manjome duels them all at once in a four-on-one duel. And then uh, still wins. Because I think it's because of Giant Rat. <laughs> like, yes. helps him save the day. Which is great, because there's a scene where he's, like, yelling at Ojama Yellow, I think. And he says, basically, he's talking about how small monsters can be useful, even though they're trash. And then they have this very sad shot of Giant Rat holding a, uh, holding a skull being super sad about being basically talking shit about. Yeah, he's like very, like, he's like offended. Yeah. Um, but he's so bummed out. But yeah, he ends up uh, summoning Kyarkyu Panda. And because of. That's right. And he pops Ring of Destruction on it and kills them all at once. Yes. Uh, and then he duels the king. And the king, for some reason, plays Metal Zoa, which is really funny to me for some reason, because it's like a Bandit Keith thing. It is really um, funny because, yeah, it's super minus as well. Metal Morph plus Zoa is better than Metal Zoa. Yes, it is. Metal Morph plus the original card is basically always better than the Metal mm-hmm. version of the card. Yeah, because Metal um, Morph is much better than the shitty card they tribute yes, to. Yes, the shitty effect on the other cards. It's actually very similar to... Um, neo bubble man and metamorphosis where metamorphosis what you can get from metamorphosis is 10 times better than anything you could get out of neo bubble man yes um and manjomi wins and he becomes the number one student at north academy and then the the old man reveals that he was in fact the chancellor of north academy the entire time um and because manjome beat everyone he is now their representative in the upcoming school duel, and he reveals 
to Manjome that the representative for Duel Academy is Judai. And Chaz is like, ah, my rematch time. And then that's the end of the episode. Which is, yeah, this episode was really good, actually. Fucking it's, great, yeah. Yeah, it's been a while since we last saw Manjome after he got literally fucking washed. The man was so, so crazy minus that he basically minus his way onto a boat. So that's why it doesn't surprise me that the boat eventually capsized, because that's just another shit thing that's happened to him. <laughs> another shit play based off of everything he's done. But this, like, training arc where he's kind of like... It's kind of like a character redemption at some point. Because you even have that moment where he has 39 cards and he gives one away. Um, he has 40 cards and he gives one away to the old man so that he can go in there. Which is not something that I would ever think of his character would do up until this point. So that was a very cool way of seeing it that way. You actually get to see him do actual good tactics because i feel like the unfortunate thing of him having to fight he basically was a jobber but he was never established as actually being good actually his duels established him as being absolutely shit at the game <laughs> so these yes duels... that's he he basically loses to everyone all the time uh despite the reputation of being like hot shit mm -hmm. um and not the case at all in these. He actually gets to do some good dueling here. Yeah, and he beats a lot of dudes, and he does it in very interesting ways with cards that are not the best. Um, and sh actually show him that he's actually competent and knows what he's doing. It's just that maybe he was too full of himself, and he was... I would actually believe it more now that it wasn't that he was necessarily bad, is that he was overconfident, and he just thought he could win. But in a situation here where he's using worse cards and he's still able to win, it makes a little bit more sense uh, for stuff like that. Um, and yeah, I also like that every card that he picked up was basically used later on. I also like the start of this crazy man thing where he's hallucinating and he's seeing the Ojama yellow. Um, I also like it when the Ojama yellow is summoned at the end because he uses uh, return from the different dimension to pay off his life points. So he brings back Gemini imps, disc fighter, skull fight, and skull knight number two and KA2 Death Scissors, and Ojama Yellow. He already has game with the 4,000 attack ones, but he Ojama Yellow brings back himself with zero attack, and I think he's just like, shut up, get out of here, you no-attack monster. I don't want anything to do with you. You're uh, so, fun fact, he's not actually hallucinating the Ojama Yellow. That is a legitimate dual spirit. Chaz can see spirits now. Oh, okay. So he can 100% see him now. Uh, so, yeah, this... he. I don't think he realizes it yet. Um... Yeah. But yeah, this he gains the ability to see dual spirits here. So to him, he's just like this. Uh, so uh, just according to him, he doesn't know dual spirits are a thing. He doesn't know that Judai also has one. To his mind, he's basically something changed in him when he was on that boat, and now he's just always hallucinating. Whether it's Judai, yes. <laughs> very, very friendly, asking for a game or something like that. I also really like that is that when he imagines Judai in his mind, Judai is still Judai. So even when yeah, he's, he's like, not like an evil personification of him or anything, he's still no. just like chill. Like, what's up, dog? Yeah, let's <laughs> want to play some Yu-Gi-Oh, bruh, bruh. And then he goes like, "Leave me alone." He goes like, "Okay, all right." <laughs> he doesn't, he doesn't <laughs> <laughs> which is pretty good. So this was a it a is good, quality. Yes, one hundred percent quality. This is a one hundred percent a character redemption episode in one go. I really like the idea of someone going into the cold ass and picking up cards to make a deck. That's great. I love that shit. I love that he trained in the Arctic. <laughs> and I think it's next episode where he actually wears the North Academy um, uniform. But... He wears the uh, black jacket, yeah. Yeah, that's officially, I think, the, the end. I think the next episodes are the, the cementing into the end of it here. But this is the start of basically the revival of this character who has... Uh, probably on purpose been completely shit on and now he's actually someone that i actually legitimately like where i'm like oh yeah i'm kind of down for this guy winning it's unfortunate he's not because <laughs> judah is the main character but i can still like him and i think he's rad from where he duels here so i hope that eventually i do get yes. to see him win some games uh and this is the birth of manjome thunder mm. which only makes sense if you know japanese <laughs> So yes. basically, uh, Manjome insists that he be referred to formally. So he, he gets really mad if you don't put the honorific at the end of his name, which Judai never does. Um, and so he, he always would say, like, he says it before this, actually, too. 
Um, but this is where it becomes a thing. Or he says, uh, "Menjome sanda," as in he. The translated version of that is basically saying that, like, that's Menjom. Menjom Mr. Menjome or Menjome Sir or whatever to you. He's telling him to to say Menjome San because he wants him to put the honorific on his name. Um, but the way he's saying it sounds like Sanda so, or Thunder. And so Thunder. the students at this academy mistake what he's saying to be Thunder instead of the command that he's giving them. And so they end up calling him uh, Manjome Thunder. And so he, he gets his chant now. Um, actually, I don't remember if he gets the chant here or if he just gets the nickname. He gets the, he gets the nickname here. The chanting starts next episode. The chanting is in the... Okay. Yeah, so he gets the nickname here. Um, in the English version, they can't do that because nobody fucking knows Japanese, and the joke does not work <laughs> if you don't know Japanese. So they change it to the Chaz. Not as good. <laughs> no. And instead of the one ten hundred thousand Menjome Thunder, uh, it's just Chaz it up is the chant. Yes. Not Chaz nearly it. as good. No. I will say, eventually, Chaz It Up is very funny to say in, like, a ironic way <laughs> to say Chaz It Up. Especially the way he kind of... The, the voice actor for Chaz, the English one, he does his best to make Chaz It Up try to be <laughs> something. <laughs> Which I'll give him points for that, and it is kind of fun to say Chaz It Up, but it's nowhere near as fun as to say <laughs> Manjome Thunder. No, Manjome Thunder is much better. Yes, one hundred percent. This is a case of like, specifically, they tried to find like um, a pun, and the only pun they had for Chaz is jazz. So, jazz it up, Chaz it up, just not as good as uh, Manjo May Thunder, which is very funny that he yeah he does say the Sunda, and then you get to hear that so. Um. It ends up being a fantastic. It's it's it, this is actually something that they have to deal with a lot when it comes to localization. Is that it's actually very easy to make puns in Japanese, um, because and a lot those of those puns never translate. No, they never, never translate over here. They're so hard to translate over here, and it's like a nightmare to do it. Um, and it's a shame because I think they end up being pretty good gags. But when you have to actually be explained about why it's a good gag. It's maybe not as impactful, but I don't know. I still like the idea of calling someone Thunder when they're, he's saying sir. I think that's still funny, especially because he yeah, doesn't Yeah, he's saying, really... trying to call me Manjome sir, and then they're like, Thunder? Yeah, Thunder. And then the funny thing is is that he, do he doesn't really pick it up. He's just like, whatever, call me Thunder. <laughs> maybe to him, they're just saying Manjome sir, <laughs> and he's like, all right, this is what I'm asking for. But no, they're actually just saying Thunder, Thunder, Thunder. <laughs> Yeah, they're just saying thunder over and over again, and uh, eventually, he because I think in this one he tries to correct them, um, but he leans into it all the way. Yeah. <laughs> After that, yes, I also do like the build up to it where he goes one. Uh, what's the the official build up one 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 hundred? It's then? one one ten hundred thousand. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's a good build up. In general, he has the makings of the perfect uh, wrestling chant, which I'm down for. Yes, yes, it, that, that's. I assume that's like the inspiration for this. Yeah. In general. So very easy for me to end up liking this new version of Monjome when he comes built in with an awesome thing to say. But yeah, fantastic episode. What do you think about it? Great, great episode. Uh, Monjome goes from being like kind of an insufferable mini Kaiba who's like not very interesting at all um, into a really great character. And it starts with these episodes. So I'm obviously always happy to see the, the birth of good Manjome as opposed to shitty, unenjoyable Manjome that we've had up till now. Yes. And actually I'm going to say right here, and this is going to be a controversial thing. I'm going to say right now, Manjome stocks still in the gutter. Manjome thunder stocks though. <laughs> Brand new. Yes. The rebrand. Um yeah. The rebrand of the of the previous mention is rising and fucking amazing. It's great. Yeah, the the reboot of uh Manjome. <laughs> yeah. Much better. One hundred percent. They've gone in a new direction that I can really respect. Ah so what were the differences in the adaptations then? 
besides you explained one of them with the Manjome Thunder, but what were some of well, the Well, that's other ones? that's the biggest one mm-hmm. is the Manjome Thunder one. Um the there's a little bit of like language difference where Ojama Yellow refers to Chaz as Anaki, which is the same thing that Sho calls Judai, which basically just means big bro or big brother. Mm-hmm. Um in the English version, he calls him boss instead because the Ojamas have like really weird voices, and they all call him uh, boss instead of brother. I do remember that boss, boss. Yeah, the English or the Japanese version of this has Manjome talk about how he had to wrestle uh, polar bears and sharks and bats for the cards. <laughs> the English version does not. The English version just says he found them. Continuing the joke of. Bears in Yu Gi Oh! Where... Yes. It's a pretty good gag. I don't know why they cut that. I would have laughed at that, 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 that shit as a child. Missed opportunity, really. Huge missed opportunity. And then uh, the, the North Academy rankings are different. In, uh, in the Japanese version, it's the king and the four emperors. The uh, English version, it's just the czar is the the top one, and then the other ones have no title. I assume because the four emperors is like the the four saints kind of reference from Japan, Mm -hmm. and four kids hates Japanese culture, so they didn't want to say anything about it. Um, And so they like just let that go. And those are the main differences. Interesting stuff. I wonder if they also gave him a Russian accent because there was czar. They did. They did. Okay. <laughs> they sure did. Go. They gave so, him a terrible Russian accent. God, I'm going to be so upset when we get to the Crystal Beast episodes because oh. they don't have the... <laughs> they don't have the... The Japanese version doesn't have the, the fake Arnold oh. Schwarzenegger voice for Amber Mammoth. That's that's Goku. That's that's our American Goku right there. <laughs> it sure <laughs> is. Damnest. It sure is. No, uh, no. And then the Don Zalug is not Christopher Walken in the Japanese no, version either. Right. I remember that. We've had this conversation before about Don Zalug. Mm-hmm. Here with the Dark Scorpions. Here to take them all out. I play Chick the Yellow in attack mode and end my turn. <laughs> oh, God. I'm looking forward to seeing the Dark. I actually legitimately like the Dark Scorpions. I tried to make a Dark Scorpion deck, but Don Zalug is the only good member of the Dark Scorpions. The rest yeah. of them are straight. Yeah, the Dark Scorpions suck. Yeah. They have the most archetype support for an archetype that just blows straight chunks. was never good. But anyway, let's move on to the next episode, which is episode 25 and episode 26, called uh, The School Duel Part 1, and I'm going to assume The School Duel Part 2. Or as it's known in Japanese, versus Manjome Thunder, first part, the threat of the armed dragon, and versus Manjome Thunder, second part, armed dragon level seven. Yeah, so this is the beginning of the school duel where Manjome basically gets like the North Academy special cards, which is the armed dragon series. Um, and then we also get the Manjome brothers. The shitty brothers the nothing, um, to know. talk more about their they're like pressuring Manjome to win uh, because they call him like the failure of the family or whatever because he doesn't because uh, he, he he lost basically to Judai and they thought that was horse shit um, and so they're giving him a bunch of shit for it um Judai finds out that Manjome is the opponent in this one because he did not know yet. Um, they they do the weird like plan in this one where it's like politics, money, and dueling. That's <laughs> how we're gonna take over the world. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then uh, Manjome is like, "What the fuck? <laughs> That's a stupid plan." But he's you know, he's he's cowed by his brothers. Him. Yeah. He, he's uh kind of basically getting bullied by them. Um, and he kind of is like having a bit of a breakdown moment in the, in the bathroom where he's like, no one kind of gets it where like, if I don't win, I'm worthless basically. So no matter what, like it's basically the opposite of Judai's whole philosophy, right? Where Judai's whole thing is like, you play for passion and you play to like, obviously you want to do your best and you want to win, but you play for fun. Like it's about enjoying the ride. And Manjomi's like, I've never been able to do that because my whole life, 
my brothers have basically said that if I can't win and I'm not the best, then I'm worthless. Um, Judai kind of tries to, like, actually, I don't think he actually talks to him at this point. I think it's a little bit later on. Um, the duel starts, and uh, Manjomi is like, I'm a different man than I was before. And they start dueling. The duel generally goes through, and the end of the episode is when um, Chaz wipes out uh, Judai's field with Arm Dragon level 7, and then um, attacks Judai with the Arm Dragon level 7. And then we go into a cliffhanger into the next part. Mm-hmm. This is also the episode where uh, Avion gets destroyed again. Because he gets, uh, he's one of the monsters caught in the blast of Arm Dragon Level 7's yes. Genocide Cutter. Good Which name, by the way. Good name. Real good name. <laughs> Great name. Great yeah. name. No denying on that. Um, yeah. Well, I, we can get into the exact feeling. Actually, no, we can start here. There's enough stuff here that are that we can probably go here. Talk about it here a little bit before we go into the next one. Yeah, I at least of, the stuff with like Najomi's brothers is pretty good. Yes, a lot of the stuff with Manjomi's brothers was very good. The continuation of kind of fleshing out his characters a little bit more, understanding his headspace a little bit, um, understanding where he's coming from, really also setting up another dynamic, as you mentioned before, that he's in another opposite of what Judai kind of believes in dueling, which is to have fun. Try your best, try to win, but at the end of the day, it's a game and we should all have fun, where he's never, (laughs) like you said, never really been able to have that kind of moment because all his life has been trying to win this game that's all his brothers care from him is that he needs to win once we get you we'll have the political landscape on lock we'll have everything on lock and boom we're done we're good um and that's a lot of pressure to give to a kid who is basically in high school yeah like a freshman in high school yeah and his brothers are much uh older than him as well so it's also it's in general his brothers are real big dicks here yeah huge assholes yeah and uh this also i think a good setup of um in the beginning they're trying to force him to be like not force him but saying basically we bought all these very expensive cards and you're going to use them to win and i think that either at the end of this episode or in the beginning of the next one it's revealed that he's not using any of those cards is that he's trying yeah, to Yeah, he he him. decided to use the um the North, North Academy Gap. cards that he got mm-hmm. from them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um which is an interesting way. You could even see it when they offer him the cards. Like previously when he was offered the super rare cards to win, like with uh with uh Kronos, he immediately gobbled that shit up and was like, Ah oh, yes, this is what I need. But now that he's being offered it again, you can see the change in character is that he doesn't really feel comfortable um with that specific setup he probably feels that he could probably do it he doesn't need those anymore he's a changed man he's back with a new outfit and he's got people chanting thunder at him he doesn't need this um so yeah all that stuff was uh really good and really good stuff to break up here start starting to start here i also liked when i think it's it's a it's really funny play because you very rarely see this where Judai messes up because he activates Hero Ring and he equips it to Percentatrix, and then he's like, "Well, that's great, idiot! I use Arm Dragon Level 5's effect." Yeah, and, <laughs> which is really good. Yes, which was great. I was like, "Oh, damn! That actually was a legitimate mistake that he made, and he got fucking punished for it, as he deservedly mm-hmm. so got punished for it." Um, I also like the idea that the Arm Dragons are exclusive to North Academy. <laughs> yes, it's like their their secret special cards. Yes, which is great because I also like the Arm Dragons. Um, Arm Dragon level three in his actual monster form looks nothing like he does in the card, which is really funny to me. No, <laughs> no. And, and also, when they animate level seven, he's always looking up. He's never looking directly ahead. <laughs> Something I also noticed, which is very funny. Uh, but overall, yeah, it's a good start of the duel here. Um, I enjoyed it. How'd you feel about it? I also like the beginning when it's he good. summons all the elemental heroes, except for Wild Man. He's just, like, out practicing summoning elemental hero Avion, Brissettatrix, Clay Man, and Spark Man, just for the hell of it. Yeah, it's a good duel. Uh, 
this whole section is really good because again I like the um the change in Manjome where he's like before he was just like a little snooty asshole and now he's like kind of believing in himself a little bit more and he's like you can tell he's conflicted because he's being told that he has to win no matter what but he doesn't really give a shit about the brother's evil plan like that's not what he's here for he's here to to duel because he loves to duel and he he's he's confident in himself um he's not doing it for them and but the, they like constantly have pressure on him to to do it you know to to fulfill their evil plan that he doesn't really give a fuck about so i like the the little bit of conflict that he's got here and the eventual reveal that um he is not using the cards that the uh brothers gave him is really really good because like you said it's the exact situation that he was in before except this time he's like i don't need to take the all the bullshit cards i'm using my cards that i know how to use that i care about um which was cool i like yes, that it's very good um i think there was something else i also like that i think the speech he gives right before the duel starts where he says basically i left this school in tatters ashamed some of you fucking cheered me leaving but guess what i'm back from the bowels of hell to fucking destroy judai <laughs> i love how often japanese media is like i came back from hell yes him and liz him and elizabeth were in the same hell pit and waiting to come back for it yeah, I really like the use of hell. That's if anything, that's what the uh, English side needs more. We need to have more references to hell itself. <laughs> I, also, <laughs> I also like. There's also a good callback to when uh, Kronos was uh, so because he's emceeing it and he's like super nervous and everything. But when he was doing this with Masawa, he pronounced Masawa like Ah, yes, the great, wonderful Masawa. And then when he goes to Judai, he goes like And Judai. And then for this one, because yeah, he, he calls him um, he calls him dropout boy, doesn't he? Yeah, and this one he, accidentally he, he starts he goes like dropout boy, oh yeah yeah, Judah Yuki. <laughs> oh, he's like he very quickly goes like oh, yeah, shit. yeah, that's right. He catches himself, yeah, right at the last minute. He's like, ah, oh, yeah, boy, fuck, um, I actually want this guy to win. <laughs> and in general, I also uh, like Curtis's little. I think he said I forgot to mention it with the Masawa one, but there's a point where when, when Masawa was doing it, he's like. Why the fuck isn't Masawa in Obelisk Blue? This sucks! <laughs> Which is really good. You're just bringing up the fact that Judai showing up has completely screwed over everything. But, yeah. I'm ready to talk about the next episode. And the end of this duel. Alrighty. So the end of the duel. Uh, quickly approaching, because it does finish in this episode. Um... Judai gets hit by the direct attack from Armed Dragon at level 7. He is uh, manages to get out Wing Karibo to save him at the last minute. And then we know no, no, that... No, no, he um, activates Hero Spirit. But that, but that pulls he, Wing Karibo, right? No, he draws Wing Karibo, but he activates Hero Spirit to prevent him because he only had 1,600 life points, so a direct attack from... Oh, he draws into Wing Karibo, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um... We get a little reveal here that uh, the, the official reveal that Ojama Yellow is in fact a dual spirit, um, because Wing Karibo points this out to Judai. There is, um, they, they do the same thing that they always do, where Judai's like, "Thanks, buddy," when he lets Wing Karibo get fucking blasted, <laughs> so that he doesn't so, lose any life points. Yep, <laughs> it's it's a uh, it's great. Yeah, especially because Wing Karibo faces down death by just going, hmm, and then he gets yeah, fucking He just destroyed. makes that little noise and then fucking gets obliterated every time. Love it. Um, Masochism. They go through the rest of the turn of the plays, etc. Um, Judai is kind of getting shit-wrecked by Armed Dragon right now. Chaz is kind of like, you should quit because you're going to look like an idiot. Um... And then Judai's like, uh, I've been having a fucking awesome time. This duel rules. And then Manjome gets kind of pissed off. And they have a moment where, like, Judai kind of explains that he, he's sad for Manjome that you, he can't just have fun. That dueling can't be about fun for him. It has to be, like, a stressful, shitty thing. Um, 
Judai ends up winning with Flame Wingman, as he does in season one. Hell yeah! As he as he does in like every duel. Um, I will mention that he the brothers use, come and he had to use <laughs> literally look like they're. Alive. He had to use Warrior yes, Returning Alive for Avion, but Avion also was destroyed twice this episode. Uh, previous episode, he was destroyed in the blast, and then this episode, he gets fucking punched to death and exploded by Arm Dragon level 7, and then he gets brought back to be summoned into Flame Wing Man. <laughs> yes. Um, the brothers come up, and they're all pissed off, and they're like, why didn't you use the cards we gave you? Uh, Manjome is like, I wanted to win with my own cards, with my own strategies and ability. And the brothers literally grab him like they're going to beat the shit out of him in front of the entire school. They, like, yank him up by the collar. Um, but Judai comes in, and he's like, get your fucking hands off of him. And then uh, it turns out the prize for the school duel was a kiss from the card shop owner, the lady. Because <laughs> yes. weird old man things. Um, Former Miss Duel Academy. Yes. And then... Um, Judai gives him a bit of a speech. It's like, yeah, you didn't win the duel, but you did win against your shitty brothers because you're not letting them use you anymore. And then Jome is kind of like having a PTSD flashback, and he's like, everyone's just going to make fun of me again like they did when I left. Um, Everyone's just going to treat me like shit again because I lost. But then everyone um, starts doing the Manjome Thunder chant for him, which is actually a really great moment. I fucking love that moment. And then the uh, the brothers leave. Oh, no, 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 my bad. That's later on. Yeah, it's it's after he loses. Um, Well, I think that the North Academy students are doing it throughout the duel. Yes, they are. They're screaming thunder for their boy. In the the end, when he loses and he's like, no one here will accept me because they they basically kicked me out for losing. Um, And I lost again, and everyone's just going to basically shit on me again. Uh, and then the the pro- Duel Academy proper students uh, also start doing the Manjome Thunder chant in, in respect for his performance. Um, as they're all about to leave, after his brothers get pissed off and leave, um, he they they go to like wish him well as he returns to North Academy, and then he says that he wants to come back to the regular Duel Academy. They do decide to let him come back. But he has to be a Slifer Red because he's not getting in with his uh, original credentials before he dropped out. And then uh, I think before that, uh, when North Academy is leaving, they try the headmaster tries to get back the Armed Dragon guards, but then he gets distracted by the the, the dueling lady kissing Chancellor Shepard, and he cries himself into the into the sub, and then he when he's going away, he's like, ah, damn it, I fucking forgot about the arm drag. And yeah, he's like, oh, I left the... I left the, um... The cards. I left the cards. He was so sad. He was so bummed. This man's basically constantly getting cucked from... <laughs> I don't know how many years they've been doing this, but apparently every single time he's losing and losing that kiss. Um... But yeah, that that was a very nice moment. I liked a lot of the Manjome Thunder stuff. I like the ending bit here because when they do the final one with all the ones at Duel Academy, it's the one from the opening. The one that they all do in the opening. <laughs> Which I thought was really nice. Um, the one where he does against his brothers is really good. In general, throughout the entire duel, all the crowd chanting Thunder whenever he would do anything is really good. Yes, I love the... Uh... All the Manjome Thunder stuff. <laughs> Early Manjome, because he's basically a completely different character from this point forward. Um, yes. Like in all the episodes coming up, he he is vaguely recognizable as the uh, Manjome that you have known up to this point. So I, I love reboot Manjome, the the new version. Yeah, it's the great. Manjome Thunder, brand new. Yes, yes, new and improved Manjome Thunder. He's fantastic. I'm all about it. Yes. Um, so yeah, this is this is great stuff. The duel was also very good. It was actually very back and forth. Judai is able to win by doing the thing that we talked about previously, where he only runs one of each card. But it turns out, no, he actually runs three hero kids, which is fucking yeah, crazy. at random. Yeah, 
I mean, you need three hero kids, but also, uh, why not just run more Sparkman and more Wildheart? <laughs> at that point. Or maybe Bubbleman, because at least you get to draw two cards from that. But it's yeah, because still... bu the anime Bubbleman is broken. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. But it's weird that in Miracle Kids, literally, in Miracle Kids, this trap card that only works with the hero kids, I think there's like zero support for hero kids outside of these like couple cards, right? It's like this and the spell card. Yeah, hero think, kids do almost nothing. Yeah, it's insane to me that, and it's also the crazier thing is that he's not considered a hero card, right? So you can't even not. search him with any of the hero. Effects. Yeah, you can't. You can't use like the cards that work with heroes, for him. Yeah. Because, in, the way that the archetype is done, is um, it's in all capitals. So if it's not in all capitals, it's not considered part of the archetype on the card. Yeah. And he has his own special one where it's literally just hero kid, but not in all capitals. It's just hero kid. So he's mm -hmm. not considered an elemental hero. He's not considered anything. <laughs> he can't use any of the supports of him. It's really weird that they decided to be like, I don't know. It's very weird. Everything about hero. I've always been very confused about hero kid and I'll always be until the death of me. It's insane to me. There's a but, lot of weird elemental hero support that's like not good, like Rottweiler. Like what? Um, yeah, Rottweiler also doesn't make sense because you also need to use polymerization before setting one on the field, and then you want him to be destroyed. It's not like. And then you like also can't like get him. You just have to draw into him because he's not like a. You can't search him or anything. Nope. nope, you can't. You can't use hero barrier. He's the only card in your hand. On your field or anything, he doesn't really. He can't be used with H Heated Heart, I think, because Heated Heart requires nope. it to be an elemental hero. It's overall mm -hmm. bad in general when it comes to them. <laughs> um, but yeah, the duel is very enjoyable. I really liked it. Um, all the stuff around it is also very good. I like seeing Amonjo May's brothers get fucking shown up because they cut the camera feed right before he loses as well, which is funny. Yeah, um, they do. I like that to show how good Monjomi is, is that he's using he used Mass Dragon to search out Arm Dragon, which is actually a pro play. Yeah, that's actually, like how you played the, the actual deck. Yep, that's how you played the game back in the day. So I was like, alright, good to see him doing good. Um, but yeah, very good, very enjoyable, very fun to watch. Uh, very interesting way of him having to actually beat Arm Dragon, even if it did require specifically Hero Kids. I probably would have actually preferred it if he just summoned Skyscraper and beat him that way. <laughs> it seemed like that would be the just best the classic way. Judai move? Yes. And it would make more sense, right? Like, to summon Skyscraper attack, Flame Wingman, game, done easy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's generally how it's done with, uh... Yeah. In, in season one, especially, that's the wombo combo. Um, yeah, because it feels like they were just trying to not redo that again, so he doesn't repeat the same tactics. But the hero kid tactic is just teaching kids that hero kids might be useful, and we shouldn't be lying. Yeah, to well, children. yeah, never. Don't trick the kids. No, it's not. Don't right. trick the kids. Uh, it's pretty good, but yeah, very good episode. Fantastic two episodes, and I'm really glad that we finally got to some good shit when it came to GX. Yes. Long in the making, we've hit when GX starts becoming peak fiction. Finally, we've reached the point. We're getting there. Putting it on the list. The Moki Moki Duel <laughs> and episode 61 of Gintama. Peak fiction. <laughs> Though I would also include probably Manjome Thunder, because it has been very enjoyable for that. Yeah, uh, I think Manjome Thunder is the point uh, up to now where, like, my favorite episodes up to this point are when... Uh, Manjome kind of gets his his backstory and his like rebranding where it's like Kaiba was kind of a little shit and then you know you you learn more about him and you learn it's because he had like a shitty dad and his dad was a gigantic asshole all the time and like there was all that drama there and so it was nice to see that Manjome had something similar because they they really bill him as just like rich douche for a lot of the beginning yeah they do I also kind of like the fact that he got the Ojama, the Ojama brothers, because it kind of also kind of goes with the fact that uh, Manjome is a brother, and so it kind of fits with that kind of theme there too. So I liked it, and you know, three Ojama brothers, three of his brothers, good enough, <laughs> works perfect sense to me. Close enough, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it fits. So yeah, 
Uh, what do you want to say the differences in these were for adaptations? Then was there anything specific? Uh, let's see. The adaptation differences, obviously, the Manjome Thunder chant being made. Chaz it up, of course. Um, so up to this point, we didn't really mention it, but uh, the other Ojamas are missing. They're they're gone for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, and in the original version, Ojama Yellow notes that Wing Karibo is a dual spirit. And says that Wing Karibo uh, might know where his brothers are because he's also a dual spirit. Um, in the English version, he just says Wing Karibo looks stupid. All he does <laughs> is make fun of Wing Karibo instead. Um, I also like it in the Japanese because when Mon- he asks Monjome to summon him so he can talk, and he says, "No, you're trash," and he's like, "Why are you so mean?" <laughs> or does- <laughs> He's like, I hate you, <laughs> I hate you so much. He was like, oh, okay. yes, that that is that does happen. It's really um, funny. In this one, also, this we're gonna a lot of the version differences are gonna be like this. Um, in this one, when Judai goes to attack Manjome with Elemental Hero Wildheart, uh, he hesitates for a minute uh, and then rephrases what he says. In the English version, it's because he tries to crack a one-liner. And then he says, actually, that doesn't make any sense, but attack anyway. Uh, in the Japanese version, he corrects himself and says Sanda, which is uh, him respecting Manjome's new chosen title. Yeah, which is Manjome Thunder. I, I realized yes. that, too. He's like, oh, yeah. It, it's catchy. Yeah. When, when everyone is calling you Manjome Thunder, I think you can get people to accept your new name. I think that's the thing I've learned here. How do you accept people accepting your new name? Have a crowd of dudes just passionately chanting it behind you. And they we will, will remember. And then, um, the only other change is that in the Japanese version, the principal mentions that he forgot to get the Arm Dragon cards back before they left on the submarine for North Academy. Instead, uh, the English version, he says that he'll be back next year to kiss uh, the card shop woman. Who's called Miss Dorothy in the uh, English Miss version. Miss Dorothy, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Specifically, Miss Dorothy. Oh, yeah. Just to Not Dorothy. Know. Miss, Miss Dorothy. Dorothy. Just to let you know her availability. <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah, that's a good set of episodes here. Next episode, I think we only have to do four, right? Let's see, 27, uh, 28, Yes, because it's think... it's two two parters, and we'd have to do six if we went beyond that. Because there's a okay. Actually, yeah, it's best that we just do four because it's a three parter after that. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, so, we'll so be it's best to just episodes, do the next four. Yep. Which are going to be episodes twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, and thirty. So look forward to more of that. Now that it seems to be kind of rolling, they got the good version of Monjome going. They got a good, decent stuff here. The season ends on episode 51, so I know for a fact shit's about to start rolling off. <laughs> it's going to start popping off. Yeah, we're, start. we're starting to move toward the actual plot now. Mm-hmm. Um, All I know is I know at the end there has to be a graduation duel with Zane, but before then, there has to be the plot of season one. There has to be one, so we're going to start getting more pieces of that going forward. And I can't wait for it, because if they follow in this kind of quality, it's going to be a good-ass time watching, for sure. But that's it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching it, everyone. As always, we will... We thank you very much for watching. Till next time, you guys have a good day. We'll see you in the next one. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Peace out.